Good morning. Today it's time to install the panel. That panel is going to go up on the wall. We all know where it goes by now if you've been watching my videos. And we'll see how we go. The first thing we're going to do is to remove the panels that are not glued on yet. They're not glued on because behind them is the holes I've drilled for the screws that hold the panel into the wall. And I've not glued them on. So that the screw holes will be hidden. So too with the centerpiece. Here we go. <clears throat> really, it's just like something bought from IKEA. Pop it in and screw it up. Quite an easy thing. You stay. Now that first screw went into nothing but plaster. It's the ones over here where I've done all the measurements that will go into the stud running between the top and the bottom of the wall. <clears throat> and as it's going into solid wall, solid wood, it's not that easy to do. Top one will stop it bowing out. Getting hard. You might notice this one is a little bit short. I have to pop that out and replace it. I'd run out of wood at the time and I just wanted the look. It may seem a little weird, but these pieces are going to be in a fit from a little bit of blue tack. Right there. I'm running out, so I don't have a lot. But basically, I want this to be able to be removed. Then I can unscrew the panel at any time I wish. So I have to do that one. You'll see I had some blue tack on before. And it's stuck to the wall. Blue tack is very handy. Whoever invented this should be a millionaire. And I expect they are. Put a piece there. I'm running out. I have to go buy some more. But that just makes this all temporary. The point of putting it up temporarily is because a, it hides this. B, I've got 
some smoothing work to do here and here. I can make some adjustments. Wiggle it and it'll go on. Or not. I don't want it falling off because of the damage it will cause A to the table down the bottom. But the whole idea is I can remove these panels and put up one covered in beautiful depth damask. I can put one up in black completely for Halloween, making the house interchangeable without completely redecorating. I made the mistake on the other side of gluing them permanently and then had to remove them when I swapped the two styles over. And then the last piece. There you go, just like a bought one. And there we have attained the magic. Symmetry. Isn't it a beautiful thing? I'm quite proud of that. Really, it's about as difficult as putting up an Ikea bookcase. But the effect is a whole lot more interesting. Anyway, that is my way of thinking. So from the fireplace I made, to the panelling, to all of the ceiling scotia and the fitments, I actually feel I've achieved something. The fireplace was a lot of work, a lot of work. I now have to complete the um, set of panels in the next bay over. And then after that one, come back, remove this cabinet, and do the um, panelling in there. It will be plain grey. I'm not doing the fancy boiserie. Um, not through the whole house. It would be a bit much. That's why there's no gold leaf in the house either. Um, we prefer a modern look, the dark, the light. And then maybe eventually we'll fix the ceiling, having done the roof. But that is all to come. It's all a game. It's all something for me to do. And I really enjoy working at it. And for those of you who love good pieces of furniture, just take a look at this tiny little piece. It's rather precious. And I have three of them. One's in my bedroom and the other two either side to make the symmetry in this room. It really is a gorgeous piece. I mean, all of the chevron work along the front. Sometimes these drawers stick. Oh, there we go. That's where I put the porcelain from my great aunts, having nowhere else to put it. But look at the work on that top. Absolutely stunning. Standing. Um, the edges of the drawer down all of the legs along the cross rails, they're all gadroon. This work is called copper work because the actual under metal is copper and then it is gilded on top. It's absolutely fantastic work and I love it. I love the pair of them. And here is his brother. This is called the Dolphin Bowl. 
spectacular piece in azure blue. Um, these Renaissance dolphins, it's just stunning. And this is the um, pair to the other one. Absolutely matching identical. It's hard to tell them apart. Somehow then I just managed to um, break the one of the legs on my tripod. But what can one expect? It was $3 in a Brocant or a secondhand store or an opportunity shop or a charity shop, whatever you like to call it. These things happen. Soon we'll tell the story of the marble, which came a long way. Okay, I have seriously broken my tripod. One leg falls off totally. We're going to have to resort to this stick on a pole with a tennis ball at the bottom. I shall quickly tell the story of the marble. This marble came from Mexico in a small town called Puro Vallarta, where I took my wife for a honeymoon. I found them in the shop. These cost an absolute fortune where we live, um, many hundreds of dollars. And they were like 30 and $40 in this little place in the middle of nowhere in the town of Puerto Vallarta. Uh, the day before I'd seen quite hefty prices on them, 100 or $200. But the day we went, there was not a cruise ship in and the prices were negotiable. And I got these for 30, 40, I think the biggest ones were $50. But then I had to get them home. And getting them home wasn't easy. Getting them home meant putting them into my carry-on luggage, which wasn't weighed, because no one weighs a small bag when you're getting on a plane. And they weighed that along with some of the porcelain my wife had bought. Mexican porcelain is beautiful. They weighed a ton. So that's the story of the obelisks, because I do like obelisks. You've seen the one outside. This is the one inside. Stunning little things. 